good evening to all i welcome you all for another uh, presentation today we'll see lecture number 30 we'll start lecture number 30 in which i am going to explain you about the time domain specifications of today we will see time domain specifications time domain specifications of a second order system second order system what are the what are the time domain specifications already we have seen in our earlier presentation that is presentation number 29 there is a graph basically i have explained you that there is a response in which we have various parameters i have mentioned there so you please refer the previous presentation that is presentation number 29 there you will have the graph means the response today i will explain you a little bit more about those parameters so basically the time domain specifications or this is the very important uh, topic in fact so what are the time domain so there are various time domain parameters which i have already covered in previous presentations however in this present presentation also i will i would like to explain you those the first parameter what we have seen is delay time what is it is delay time that is called as t suffix d delay time that is the first specification the second specification is rise time what is it rise time that is t suffix r this is t suffix d this is t suffix r and the third time third is okay peak time what is it is peak time t suffix p and the fourth one is maximum peak overshoot maximum peak overshoot that is called as m suffix p and it is measured in terms of percentage basically percentage of peak overshoot okay maximum peak overshoot normally that is represented that is that can be calculated in terms of percentage mp the the fifth one is settling time what is that settling time settling time these are the very important time domain specifications of a second order control system in uh, previous presentation i have explained you about all this how that what is this what is this like that today i will explain you there are some mathematical expressions are there some it is like mathematical formula which is to be uh, uh, which is to be practiced and you have to be remember this because the derivation part is not that much important don't bother about the derivation part and just you identify what you must know it what is the delay time how it can be calculated what is the rise time how it can be calculated what is peak time how it will be calculated similarly maximum peak overshoot as well as the settling time so these are the beautiful excellent important parameters or specifications of a time domain uh, specification of a second order control system these are the very very important and very beautiful very interesting also now i will explain you one by one 
most probably in this presentation i would like to cover first two only the remaining we will see in subsequent presentation right then we will see the first one that is delay time what is delay time so you please refer the previous presentation because all the time if you if i draw the graph now again it will take some additional time for the i think i feel it is not required because you just go through the previous slide there you will see uh, you compare uh, you will have the sufficient information there now i will just go forward uh, by explaining you that what is the first one is what is delay time what is delay time t suffix d delay time is nothing but this is the time required for the response to reach 50% of its final value and roughly i can just explain you for your better understanding not that much uh, this thing this is what your uh, graph let us say this is your maximum value 1 because we are taking the step input as input signal step signal and there this is what your 0.5 value okay then if you see the graph now we have seen that in the last class in the last presentation this will be like this only is it not this is your graph basically if you see previously so this is what your td the first present first parameter which i am going to explain you now is this is the, this is time axis actually this is time axis basically and this is your response basically c of t is the output basically this is the output this is the output versus time this is time that's why the first very parameter is td delay time delay time is nothing but the time required for this response this is your output this is the response basically now the time required for this response this is the time basically what is the time this is initially zero and the time required for this response to reach 50 percent means 0 0.5 50 percent of its final value that is the meaning of it okay the delay time is nothing but the time required for the response okay the time required for the response nothing but for the output for the response to reach to reach 50 percent of its of its final value what is your final value actually final value is one remember that the final value is one the maximum value is one why because we are taking we are considering as step input so if you consider the step input for the step input the maximum value is one therefore 50 percent is nothing but this much 0.5 therefore it is the time required for the response means for the output to reach 50 percent of its final value means this time whatever the time required for this response up to this this much this time is called as delay time that is what the delay time now is there any mathematical expression for this delay time yes there is a mathematical expression for this so how it can be uh, calculated how the delay time can be calculated now for this if you see in order to find out the mathematical expression or mathematical formula for this delay time you need to recall what is the time response that we have seen or we have derived in our previous presentations okay so have you remembered that we have considered the transfer function for the second order system as c of s by what is the transfer function c of s by r of s is equal to it is omega n square by this is s square plus 2 times zeta omega n into s plus omega n square this is what the, the standard form of the second order system the standard form of the transfer function of second order control system is it not this is what the transfer function c of s by r of s is nothing but your transfer function which is the standard form of transfer function of a second order system for this system by applying the input r of s as a step input then only you will get this type of response then the expression c of t what is the expression for c of t 
in the previous presentation we have seen that c of t can be given as c of t can be uh, uh, can be derived as c of t is equal to 1 minus e power minus zeta times omega suffix n into t by under square root of 1 minus zeta square into sin of omega d times t plus theta. Okay, this is what your expression for C of t. This is the response basically. In the expression form, this is what your response basically. This is in the expression form. C of t is nothing but your response. What is C of t? This is what your response. Response or otherwise also called as your output. What is output? Response or output? This is in terms of the expression. Whereas in terms of the graph, this is what? In terms of your graph. This one. So remember this. C of t is equal to 1 minus e power I mean 1 minus e power minus zeta times omega n into t by square root of 1 minus zeta square into sin of in bracket omega d times t plus t. This is the expression for the response of second order system. Okay. Then, then what is zeta? We know that. What is zeta here? This is the damping factor or damping ratio. Understood? Where? Here. Your, what is zeta? Zeta is nothing but damping ratio. It is damping ratio or otherwise also called as damping factor. What is? Damping factor. Is it not? Is it not? We have seen that. And what is omega n? Omega n is equal to your undamped. Undamped. Undamped natural frequency. Undamped natural frequency. And what is zeta, uh, however, defined? What is omega d? Omega d is a damped natural frequency. What is that? Damped natural frequency. Clear? And what is theta? What is the theta in this expression? Theta is equal to and omega d is the damped natural frequency and there is expression for omega d. Have you remembered it? Omega d is equal to omega suffix n square root of 1 minus zeta square. This expression also we have seen. This is very very important relationship. Remember that. This is the relation between damped natural frequency to the undamped natural frequency. This is damped natural frequency. This is undamped natural frequency. This is called the relation between these two. This is very very important. This is very very important. This equation. And what is theta? Theta is equal to tan inverse of square root of 1 minus zeta square by zeta zeta this is what your theta value clear so by knowing these these values now i can substitute these these things in that expression c of t so let us recall that let us rewrite that expression c of t if you write that expression c of t c of t is equal to it is 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n times t under square root of square root 1 minus zeta square into sine of omega d times t plus theta. This is what your response equation. Now, I am going to explain, I mean to derive the expression for delay time. So, what you will substitute? Wherever t is there, substitute T, just a substitute, substitute T is equal to T suffix D. Because your time now considered as delay time, no? Therefore, wherever T is there in the expression, you substitute as TD. Then your expression becomes C of TD. Clear? This is equal to 1 minus E power minus zeta times omega N into T suffix D clear this implies 1 minus 
it is zeta square of sin into omega d t again suffix d plus theta. This is what the expression becomes like this because here c of t. So, in I substitute t as t d, t suffix t. 1 is 1, e power minus zeta omega in t, here t is there, there t d, t suffix d, delay time. And square root of 1 minus zeta square as it is I have mentioned here, sin of sin is there, omega d, omega d is there, t, just t d plus theta is theta. Now, now what I have to substitute here is, now what is c of t d value? C of T D value is nothing but your response now means C of T D nothing but here T you substitute T D. Now what is C of T D for this delay time? So as per the definition of this C of T D your T D value is nothing but 0.5. At time C T D what is C of T D value? At time T D what is the value of C of T D? What is that value? 0.5. Then substitute 0.5 here. Therefore, 0.5 is equal to 1 minus. You substitute 0.5 here and then you write the expression. Okay. Now, if you substitute that, you will have, you will have just, I will uh, erase this for your, uh, even I can remove this because you are already familiar. No? That's why just I want to clear. So, so, this implies C of T D is nothing but 0.5 because the response becomes 50 percent, no, that is why, it is response basically, it is 50 percent, then 1 minus remaining as it is you write, e power zeta omega n into T d square root of under square root of 1 minus zeta square into sin of omega d T d plus theta, clear? Now, what you will do? Now, you just make small mathematical simplifications. Just this, you bring this 0.5 to the right side and the minus of this entire parameter is one quantity only. Minus of this entire, so minus of this entire quantity you bring to the left side then and 0.5 to be taken on right side. Then what you will have? This minus term if it comes in left side becomes plus means a power minus zeta omega n into T d under square root of 1 minus zeta square into sin of omega d T d plus theta is equal to, it is 1 no, it is 1, you become 0.5 to the right side, 1 minus 0.5 is nothing but your 0.5, clear, 0.5. Now, from this, from this, we need to do some mathematical, I mean uh, simplification and some linear approximations will be applied here. By applying some linear approximations here, by applying, by applying linear approximations, what? Linear approximations. So, some approximations will be required because this can be, uh, everything can be taken to right side and you substitute this and uh, okay, by applying that, you will get finally, I will write the expression, what you will have for TD is nothing but your delay time will become as TD is equal to, it is 1 plus 0.7 times zeta by omega n. Omega sir, this is what your expression, you just remember this formula only, this is very very important formula because do not worry about uh, the derivation, derivation part will not be asked in your competitive examinations, you need to remember this value, TD delay time is equal to 1 plus 0.7 times zeta means damping factor by omega n, undamped natural frequency. Therefore, in order to find out the delay time of the given response, you, you need to know, you need to have two parameters, zeta value must be known as well as omega value also must be known. So, by substituting these two values in this particular expression, you will get TD, that is delay time. So, this is the expression 1 plus 0.7 zeta by omega n. This expression you need to remember, clear? 
this is what the expression for td now i move for the second one that is what the rise time this completes about the delay time 1 plus 0.7 zeta by omega n okay this is what about your i mean delay time just you need to remember the expression itself forget about the derivation it is not at all the important okay now next the rise time the next parameter is rise time rise time that is t suffix r what is rise time as in the as in the same manner what we have seen for td delay time you can define the definition for tr also by using this graph it is nothing but simply this is the time required this is the time required the time required for the response what for the response to reach to reach 0% to 100% of its final value this is what the definition final value this is for this is for under damped system only this is this definition is for under damped system not over damped not critically damped for under damped system remember that for under damped system what is under, under damped system zero is less than zeta is less than one have you remembered this this is the condition for under damped system so the system whichever satisfies this condition if its zeta value lies between 0 to 1 then that system is called as under damped system and for that system the rise time will be defined like this so this is the time required for the response to reach 0% to 100% of its final value 0% to 100% of its final value so the time required for this called as rise time whereas this is for under damp whereas for over damped system for over damped for over damped system it is 10% to 90% of its final value that is called for over damped system for over damped system okay this is the re this is the time required to reach the uh, uh, for the response to reach to 10% to 90% of its final value that is called your for over damped system clear so this is what the definition basically for rise time and now let us uh, see is there any mathematical expression for the rise time yes there is a, an expression and let us we will see that and let us recall your response as we have seen in the previous case just c of t is equal to 1 minus e power minus zeta times omega n into t under square root of square root of 1 minus zeta square into sine of it is omega d t plus theta this is your expression this implies now substitute okay now substitute t is equal to tr because now we are defining for tr no therefore wherever t is there in the expression here t is there and here t is there here t is there in these three places you substitute t as tr this means this this becomes t suffix i mean c of tr is equal to it is 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n suffix tr by under square root of 1 minus zeta square of sine of it is omega d t suffix r plus theta this is what if you substitute tr now now tell me what is c of tr what is c of tr c of tr is nothing but the response then at t equal to tr what is c of tr value it is 1 for rise time what is the definition so the time required for the response to reach the to, to reach the 100 percent of its final value what is the 100 percent for step input 100 percent is nothing but one therefore c of tr value is one here so if you substitute that 
If you substitute that, I will erase this. Okay, then if you substitute here one, just this implies, then this becomes one. Clear? One is equal to again one minus e power minus zeta times omega n tr under square root of one minus zeta square into sin of what is this? Omega t t suffix r plus theta. Clear? This is what your expression. If you substitute t equal to tr and the tr value is 1 and, uh, and uh, if you see the next simplification, what you will have? Here 1 is there, here 1 is there. Then this entire second part, minus part is there. You just bring to the left side and bring this one to the next side. 1 minus 1, 0. This means that e power minus zeta omega n into tr by under square root of 1 minus zeta square into sin of it is omega d tr plus theta is equal to 1 minus 1. Clear? What is this? 0. Clear? So, this equal to 0. And further this implies, this implies means the entire product, this product equal to 0. So, remember that the exponential term which is there here that cannot be 0 means that e power minus zeta omega n into t r by square root of 1 minus zeta square whatever is there this parameter this should not equal to be 0. This never be 0. Then what is the other? sin of omega d t r plus theta, it could be 0, it could be 0. Then, then if you substitute that, already we came to the conclusion, clear, this implies, this implies, this means sin of omega d t r plus theta equal to 0, this could be 0. And uh, assume that the entire this parameter as phi, clear? Assume that omega d t r plus theta equal to phi, then what you can say? What you can write this as sin of sin of phi equal to 0. When it will be 0? For what values of phi? Phi equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi and so on and so forth. For all these values of phi, this value becomes 0. This implies then you substitute what is phi actually? Omega d tr plus theta is equal to basically initial value 0. Na? Therefore, if you consider 0, you will not get any value. That is that's why you substitute pi. Let us consider as pi. This phi should be taken as equal to pi. This implies from this omega d tr is equal to take theta out or right side. It becomes pi minus theta clear and then what is omega d value or what is tr value from here what is omega d what is omega from this the second expression is tr this implies your tr is equal to pi minus theta by omega d this is what your expression for tr clear your definition for tr is over so, the expression for TR means the rise time is equal to, what is that? Pi minus theta by omega d. What is theta here? Theta is equal to tan inverse of square root of 1 minus zeta square by zeta. Clear? This is what your theta value. And then, what is omega d value? Omega d is equal to omega n square root of 1 minus zeta square. So, please remember these two values. The, these two will be substituted here. Therefore, your theta 3r becomes, it is pi minus tan inverse of square root of 1 minus zeta square by zeta whole by, uh, what is that? It is omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square. This is the expression for your tr. Friends, I am going to complete this session at this point of time.
So, in this presentation, we have covered two definitions, means two time domain specifications. Those are the first one is uh, delay time and the second one is the rise time. Clear? I think you have understood this and uh, you, I hope that you understood this uh, very nicely and uh, definitely request you to, uh, I mean, like or if you like it, you can like and then uh, definitely don't forget to share to your friends because these are the very, very important basic things that uh, every uh, engineering student or uh, whoever preparing for the counted examinations, they must, uh, I mean, uh, it, is, it is very important for them to remember and to practice these things. Therefore, I wish you all and uh, we will meet in the next presentation. Have a good day.